Connecticut CDL General Knowledge Test. Question 1. How long will you lose your CDL driving privileges if you are convicted of a second DUI offense in either a CMV or your private vehicle? A. Life. B. Five years minimum. C. One year minimum. D. Ten years minimum. Answer A. Due to nationwide drunk driving laws, a second DUI offense, regardless of the vehicle being driven, will cause you to lose your CDL for life. Your first offense is a wake-up call and a chance to get help, but your second offense is going to mean unemployment. If you get a DUI, seek help before you lose your salary and your future. Question 2. What is the best way to figure out how many seconds of following distance you have? A. Text a friend and tell them to text you back in 10 seconds and see how long that seemed to take compared to how far you traveled. B. Use the stopwatch on your phone to try to determine how long before you reach a mile marker after the car in front of you appeared to reach it. C. Wait until a vehicle passes a shadow or landmark and count the seconds until you pass it. D. Get one-fourth closer to the car in front of you, then back off again. Multiply how long this took you by four for following distance. Answer C. Count how long it takes you to reach the landmark after the car in front of you by counting 1001, 1002, and so on and you will have your following distance in seconds. All the other methods are dangerous and will not get you a true following distance. Remember, following distance needs to be increased in traffic, bad weather, for heavy vehicles, or at higher speeds. Question 3. The most important hand signal you should agree on with a helper is A. Faster B. Stop C. Go. D. Turn up the music. Answer B. Unfortunately, once an accident happens, you can't take it back. That's why it's absolutely essential that you and your helper have a very clear hand signal for stop so that you'll be able to stop what you are doing quickly before an incident occurs. Question 4. Why is it important to use a helper when backing? A. Because you are providing a job for someone else. B. Because you have blind spots. C. Because people feel more comfortable when you do. D. All of the above. Answer B. Using a helper when you are backing is important since you will be dealing with blind spots that you are completely unable to see. Before you start, work out hand signals for stop and go. Question 5. While driving at night, which lights should you use as often as you can? A. Emergency flashers. B. Novelty lights. C. High beams. D. Low beams. Answer C. When driving at night, you should be using your high beams to expand your field of vision as often as possible, as long as it is safe and legal and you will not blind any other drivers. The rule of thumb is to put them on as long as there are no approaching vehicles within 500 feet. Question 6. Why should you cover cargo? A. Because many states require it. B. To protect individuals from any spilled cargo. C. To protect your cargo from bad weather. D. All of these. Answer D. There are quite a few reasons to cover your cargo including protecting other people and the cargo itself. In addition, it will help you stay on the right side of the regulations in several states. Question 7. 
it has just reached freezing. Which of the following areas is slippery? A. A wet looking road. B. A shaded area. C. A bridge. D. All of the above. Answer D. Once the temperature dips down to freezing, some areas of the road will start to freeze. The first to go will be areas without sun, shaded areas, and bridges. If the road appears wet, that could also herald the arrival of black ice, a thin layer of slippery ice through which you can see the actual road. Question 8. Which of these is not part of the basic method for shifting up? A. Push in the clutch and shift into higher gear at the same time. B. Accelerate while pressing the clutch and turning toward the driver's side. C. Release the clutch. D. Release the clutch and press the accelerator at the same time. Answer B. You must release the accelerator, push in the clutch, shift to neutral. Release the clutch, let the engine and gears slow to what is required for the next gear, then push in the clutch and shift into a higher gear at the same time, then release the clutch and press the accelerator. Acceleration is not involved until the very end, and definitely not while pressing the clutch. Question 9. If you double your speed, how much more distance will it take to stop? A. 5 times as much. B. Twice as much. C. Three times as much. D. Four times as much. Answer D. When doubling your speed, your stopping distance increases significantly to almost four times as much as before. For example, Increasing your speed from 15 to 30 miles per hour will increase your stopping distance from 46 to 148 feet. Question 10. What will help a drunk sober up? A. Fresh air. B. Coffee. C. A glass of water. D. Time. Answer D. There is no fast answer for getting the alcohol out of your system, since it is inside your bloodstream. Coffee and fresh air will not do the trick. You must wait until you are sober, or risk losing your CDL if you drive. While country songs say love will help, we recommend you don't risk it. Question 11. Which two special conditions indicate that you should downshift? A. Starting up a hill and entering a curve. B. Starting down a hill and finishing a curve. C. Starting down a hill and entering a curve. D. Starting up a hill and finishing a curve. Answer C. Downshifting before starting down a hill allows you to take advantage of engine braking. You should downshift to the gear required, which is usually lower than the gear required to climb the hill. Downshifting before a curve improves stability and ensures you will have the power available to accelerate out of the turn. Question 12. If you are traveling at 55 miles per hour in a 30-foot vehicle, you should leave how many seconds of following distance? A. 3 seconds. B. 4 seconds. C. 7 seconds. D. 6 seconds. Answer B. The formula for following distance is 1 second per 10 feet of vehicle, and then add an extra second if you are traveling over 40 miles per hour. So for a 30-foot vehicle going 55 miles per hour, you should leave a following distance of 4 seconds. Question 13. To prevent drowsiness before a trip, the driver should A. Get 8-9 hours of sleep. B. Schedule trips during the daytime hours. 
C. Avoid medications that cause drowsiness. D. Do all of the above. Answer D. Sleep dead is a dangerous condition in which missing sleep adds up and you risk falling asleep at the wheel until you are fully rested. People are often surprised when they find out that getting less than 6 hours of sleep per night triples your risk of accident. To prevent drowsiness before a trip, the driver should get adequate sleep. Adults need 8 to 9 hours to maintain alertness, prepare route carefully to identify total distance, stopping points and other logistic considerations, schedule trips for the hours you are normally awake, not the middle of the night, drive with a passenger, avoid medications that cause drowsiness, consult your physician if you suffer from daytime sleepiness have difficulty sleeping at night or take frequent naps, incorporate exercise into your daily life to give you more energy. Question 14. Which of the following determines the safe speed for going down a steep downgrade? A. The total weight of the vehicle and cargo. B. The road conditions. C. The steepness of the grade. D. All of these. Answer D. There are several factors that help you decide upon a safe speed for going down a steep downgrade including its steepness, length, the road and weather conditions, and your vehicle and cargo weight. Question 15. What is a common cause of tire fires? A. Underinflated tires. B. Overinflated tires. C. Cold tires. D. All of these. Answer A. Underinflated tires and dual tires that touch are the most common causes of tire fires. Question 16. Total stopping distance is a combination of A. Braking distance plus stopping distance. B. Reaction distance plus viewing distance plus braking distance. C. Perception distance plus reaction distance plus braking distance. D. Reaction distance plus braking distance. Answer C. Total stopping distance is a combination of your perception distance, how far the vehicle goes from when you see the hazard until your brain processes it, reaction distance the amount of time from your brain informing your foot to take action until your foot actually does something, and braking distance, how long it takes to stop once you press the brake. Question 17. You should inspect wheel bearing seals for A. Broken leaf springs B. Tears C. Twisted axles D. Leaking Answer D. Like many seals on your vehicle, the most likely problem with wheel bearing seals will be leaking, so you should look for moisture around the seal and drops or a puddle underneath it. Question 18. What is gross vehicle weight, GVW? A. The total weight that includes the vehicle, towed vehicles, and the load. B. A vehicle's maximum weight rating specified by its manufacturer. C. The total weight of a single vehicle and its load. D. All of the above. Answer C. GVW is the simplest of the vehicle weight explanations, standing for just a single vehicle and the load that it is carrying. Question 19. What is not one of the four skill areas that operating a commercial vehicle requires? A. Safely backing. B. Steering. C. First aid certification. D. Accelerating. Answer C. 
while first aid certification could certainly come in handy at some point during your career, it is not one of the four skill areas mentioned that you must be proficient in for safe vehicle operation. Question 20. Which of the following is not something you should check during a trip? A. Mirrors. B. Text messages. C. Tires. D. Cargo and cargo covers. Answer B. You should keep an eye on all of your vehicle's key systems during your trip, such as the instruments, gauges, tires, voltmeter, mirrors, and cargo. Make sure you put your phone away for the entire journey. Question 21. You should place the starter switch key into your pocket while you are performing the pre-trip inspection because A. Someone could steal the truck. B. It could damage the starting mechanism. C. Someone could start and move the truck. D. All of the above. Answer C. When you are performing the pre-trip inspection, you do not want someone, such as a co-driver, to start your vehicle while unaware of your location and accidentally injure you. Question 22. Which of the following can you not use the BC fire extinguisher on? A. Gasoline fire. B. Wood. C. Electrical fire. D. Grease fire. Answer B. ABC fire extinguisher is no use on anything that you can use regular water on normally, which includes wood, paper, and cloth. These require an ABC fire extinguisher, or just an A fire extinguisher. Question 23. On wet roads, you should reduce your speed by A. 60%. B. One third. C. One quarter. D. One half. Answer B. When a road is wet, stopping distance is reduced, and you should slow your speed by one third. In snow, decrease further to one half your normal speed. On icy roads, you should be slowing to a crawl and getting off the road to install chains on your tires. Question 24. How many tie-downs are required for a 20-foot load? A. 1 tie-down B. 2 tie-downs C. 3 tie-downs D. 4 tie-downs Answer B. The rule is that you should have one tie-down per 10 feet of cargo, and you must have at least two per load regardless of the length. So for 20 feet, you would have to. Question 25. During your pre-trip test, when examining hoses with the instructor, you need to look for A. The location of the dipstick. B. Puddles on the ground. C. Low windshield washer fluid level. D. Phrase in the water pump belt. Answer B. During your pre-trip test, when inspecting hoses, you need to look for signs of leaks and cracks, such as puddles on the ground, fluids that are dripping on the underside of the engine or transmission, and check hoses for leaks or problems. Question 26. How close must the vehicle be from the simulated dock in the backing into alley dock maneuver, during your skills test? A. No more than 12 inches. B. No more than 36 inches. C. No more than 24 inches. D. No more than 18 inches. Answer B. As part of your skills test, you will be asked to simulate backing into an alley with your vehicle's trailer in a square position 
with your rearmost bumper no more than three feet from the simulated dock. You will only be allowed three attempts, so make sure that you practice. Question 27. The definition of a hazard is A. Something you can easily avoid. B. A road user or road condition that could be a possible danger. C. Something you can safely ignore. D. Something you must stop for. Answer B. A hazard is something that could go wrong, but it won't if you've been vigilant. Question 28. How can you start moving without rolling backward? A. Put on the parking brake whenever necessary. B. Engage the clutch before removing your foot from the brake. C. Apply the hand valve. D. All of the above. Answer D. If you have a manual transmission vehicle, partly engage the clutch before you take your right foot off the brake. Put on the parking brake whenever necessary to keep from rolling back. Release the parking brake only when you have applied enough engine power to keep from rolling back. On a tractor trailer equipped with a trailer brake hand valve, the hand valve can be applied to keep from rolling back. Question 29. To help you stay alert and safe while driving, you should A. Drink coffee if you get drowsy. B. Roll down your windows to get fresh air. C. Have a whiskey to brace yourself. D. Avoid medications with warning labels. Answer D. Be careful with medications that warn you they may cause drowsiness. If you have a concern about prescribed medications, speak to your doctor. Do not ever try to make up for sleepiness with coffee, fresh air, or especially alcohol. The only cure for being tired is sleeping until you are rested. Question 30. Always try to back toward the driver's side because A. It's more comfortable for turning your neck. B. You can see better, watching the vehicle rear out the side window. C. Your truck will naturally pull toward the driver's side. D. All of the above. Answer B. You should always back toward the driver's side because you will be able to see things much more easily. For example, you can keep an eye on the vehicle's rear by viewing it out of your side window. If your truck pulls toward either direction, it needs service, and your next comfort should not affect your safety decision. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like and share.